So you found your perfect kitten, made a reservation and probably paid for the deposit. Or you're in the process of adopting one. You're probably thinking, I can just sit back and relax now. But can you? Hi guys, welcome to this video. Today we're talking about how to prepare your home for arrival of the first kitten. Or several kittens, if you decided to get more. Because why wouldn't you? If you are preparing for a new kitten, um, make sure to also check out our videos about cat essentials, the cost of owning a cat, and the poisonous things that you can find in your house. In this video, we're going to talk about different areas of your home, so uh, kitchen, bathroom, general living space and bedrooms. We'll also go outside and talk about the balcony or a garden, whatever you have outside of your home. And then we'll talk about cat essentials and their placement within your house. One of the very important decisions that you need to make is, are you going to allow your cats on the kitchen counters? As you can see, they are allowed to walk over it. If you do decide not to let them do that, I would definitely suggest to reinforce that behavior from the very start from the, when they're kittens, um, because it may just be quite hard to do that afterwards. And as you can see, they have some cat grass here. Um, it's not always in the kitchen, we do change the placement of it, so we put it in different places and then they think it's something new, so they're more interested in eating it. <laughs> they totally think that. <laughs> Pixie is quite um, good with us cooking, so she always just observes and just watches us um, making our food. Um, but if it's something that she shouldn't be around, uh, then we just simply take her off, off the kitchen counters and Normally, she's good with not coming back too many times. She's pretty understanding <laughs> with, you know, when it comes to taking off the counter, she's running. <laughs> Whereas Bluebell is a little bit different. Uh, he would just jump on the counter. As you can see, he is just cleaning himself. So what he'll do in a minute, he'll probably just flop and <laughs> lay over the top of the counter so that's sometimes quite funny when we're cooking you open the cupboard and he just jumps straight onto it and just lays down and chills. <laughs> One very important adjustment that we had to make um, is we have to keep this cloth over the top of the toaster because they kept jumping on it and putting their paws inside um, especially when they were kittens, um, they probably wouldn't do that now, but just in case we keep this over the top anyway. They still do it sometimes. I saw Blue Blue the other day when oh. I was using it. Oh, well, after I was using it. Well, oh. <laughs> it was still cooling. <laughs> That's not good. So yeah, definitely check your kitchen appliances and things that you keep out on display at all times and make sure that they are safe. And um, if you have a microwave, maybe see if the cats can not get behind it. Um, I think a good idea is to just uh, quickly switch it off when you're not using it, just in case, because, uh, yeah, <laughs> switch it off now. Um, because, you know, if, if they manage to take the cloth off, uh, they can put the paws inside. I don't know if there's anything that's, um, you know, using the electricity when it's not working, if that makes sense. But uh, I guess it's better to be safe than sorry. Definitely. We also tend to keep our like, hand blender on the side here, so we always switch the power off as well. Um, just in case um, it's not really somewhere that they would get to. Um, another thing is that we had to hide a few things. So for example, avocados can be poisonous to cats. So they're no longer in the fruit bowl, they live in the fridge now. Another thing is this mortar uh, where we crush our Himalayan salt. So we used to just keep it out like this. So it was easy to get to, but salt, Oh, it's new, yummy. <laughs> <laughs> can be very poisonous to cats, so now that lives in the kitchen cupboards too. Um, so these are just little adjustments that you might need to consider um, when getting your kitten. Another thing that we need to talk about is the tops of your cupboards and the top of the fridge. Um, so just take a look around and see if it is accessible to your cats. And if that's something you never clean, then it might be worth doing that before the arrival of the kitten. And I, if you have to ask yourself a question, is it accessible? That means it is. This guy can get anywhere, guys. Uh, he specializes in finding places to squeeze through. <laughs> and I think he's on a hunt to get some treats now because that's, that's the cupboard where we keep the treats. And he will probably attempt to open it in a second. <laughs> 
Bluebee, excuse me, what's happening? Like I mentioned earlier, uh, he's a master at squeezing through places and going to places that you think that aren't accessible to the cat. Now, going from the tops of your cupboards, you might want to check the bottoms of them. Um, our kitchen cupboards go to the very bottom, um, but there is a hole right under the fridge. So if you have a hole like this, you might consider uh, putting something that will stop the cats from squeezing inside and then you being unable to get them out from there. Especially when they're little kittens. Uh, yeah. At the moment, we don't have to have anything in there, but uh, when Bluebell, especially Bluebell, was a little kitten, he was super interested uh, yeah. with the noises that come from the fridge or when you put the dishwasher on. And going to the dishwasher, uh, that's quite an important one as well. <laughs> <Yes>. uh, <laughs> cats just so love exploring. Um, so when you finish your dishes, which our dishwasher just finished um, not that long ago, as you can see, I open it and he straight away comes inside. So he's such a good model. <laughs> um, so just uh, be careful not to open it wide enough so that the cat can get inside but might not get out um, or just open it completely which is probably the best thing to do um, when the drawers are out sometimes they might want to climb inside which I don't let them do that I know that some people do but I just don't let them go inside just in case so if you are worried that your cat might squeeze into the dishwasher and then it would lock, it won't be able to get out or anything like that, a little tip is to get a cloth, put it over the top, and then that way the dishwasher won't close completely, uh, you will have some air flowing through it, but the cats won't be able to get inside. So this brings us to the end of the kitchen and we can go into the bathroom. Our bathroom is very small, so there won't be much to go over here, and we hope you can see everything. Um, so the first thing is the sink area. Um, this is not something that was accessible to our kittens from the get-go. They wouldn't jump into the sink from when they were very little. But it will depend on the layout of your bathroom and how your furniture looks like. Um, so we have the sink, we've got the soap and then we've got the toothpaste. Toothpaste can be quite dangerous to cats. Uh, we use ones that doesn't have xylitol, so even if they don't decide to bite through it, which thankfully they have not done, uh, this would not be poisonous to them. You might want to take a look at the soap. Um, so we have the um, liquid soap and then just a bar of soap as well. Again, they have not touched it, but just keep an eye on this and things like that uh, when you first get a kitten. So you just observe their behaviours and see if they are interested in it. You might need to move it somewhere else or maybe decide to use a liquid soap if they would be interested in eating the bar of soap. <laughs> <laughs> it can happen with little kittens. They just like to explore. Yeah, definitely. Then we have those little baskets. Again, um, just be mindful of what's in them and if that's something that the kittens can just steal and <laughs> eat accidentally. Uh, again, this has not happened. I just think it's not very accessible to them. There is no space for them to jump over that. Hello. Oh, hi, Pixie. She's joining us. Look at that tail. <laughs> she wants to be petted. Hello. So yeah, we were quite lucky with that. Another thing that we were lucky with, they're not very interested in the toilet paper. And as you probably know, it can be quite a disaster if they decide <laughs> to play with it, which I find so funny. I actually wish they did that. She played with it once, but yeah. um, she lost interest very, very quickly. <laughs> um, also, just on the note of the sink, uh, it has become very much accessible, especially recently. Pixie yeah. has this weird thing. Uh, when we're in the living room, she just goes into the sink and just meows. And um, just wants attention. Yeah, it's super That's funny. Strange. Little cutie. As with items around your sink, the same goes to the bathtub. Um, so just take a look at like what you have laid out around your bathtub. Um, and again, just observe. Don't feel like you have to hide everything because the cats might just not be interested in it. And they might get interested if you do decide to get it out at the later stage. So I would just suggest um, observing them and seeing if they would like to make a mess. I think just to add to this, um, observe at the beginning and 
probably for the first few days, I would just keep the bathroom closed if you know in the house uh, and then decide what should be kept out, what should be locked away in the cupboard. Definitely. Um, we do still keep the bathroom closed and I will just show you why. On this side of the bathroom, we have this little unit with the drawers. Um, it is made of this like rattan. woven rattan material, so it's quite enticing for cats. And there was a couple of instances when they were trying to climb it and it fell. <laughs> um, fortunately, that was when we were right by them, uh, but that's why we closed the bathroom when we leave the house. Um, and recently, uh, this basket has become quite wonky, so if they jump on it, sometimes the lid goes inside. So that's another thing, we just need a new one. <laughs> <laughs> then you just need to fish the bluebell out of there. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> sometimes you go like by the, by the basket and there's just like a paw attacking you. <laughs> yeah. He just, he does like sitting inside of it, but we just don't like the idea of him getting inside and then not being able to get out. <laughs> Unlikely, but, you know. Are you going to model falling into the basket? No, but she just found a little opening in between the lid and the side, so she probably tried to get in. As you may know, ragdolls don't like giving you privacy when you're in the bathroom. Pixie's just... Chipping away <laughs> on the already broken basket. <laughs> so, um, I would say it's quite impossible not to let them in the bathroom completely because if you close yourself in here, they will just be outside the door meowing until you let them in. Wow, thank God we are out of the bathroom. Turns out the best angle was uh, for me to stand in the bathtub. So, you know, you just gotta do it for the shot. And um, now we in the living room. Uh, and the, th the first thing that comes to my mind when I'm thinking of cat proofing the house and preparing for your first kitten is the cable management. Because as we know, cats like biting on things and cables are super attractive. So, uh, this is where your uh, cable management skills are going to be tested and tested over and over again, guys. And for us, it was a simple matter of, you know, squeezing off the hanging cables that we had and uh, nicely putting them behind the router. Um, and that way, uh, it saves us some, uh, you know, expensive replacing the cables. Um, another good example would be the um, laptop charger. Uh, I just simply uh, run the cord around the actual adapter and then that way this is nice and short, doesn't have to dangle anywhere because that would be super attractive to the cats. And in fact, uh, this is something that was super attractive to them. So, uh, you know, cats will be the best at telling you what needs to be hidden and what needs to be taken care of because they will really quickly go over to that and be like, oh, this is fun, I'm just going to play with that cable. <laughs> We have one here as well, um, so that's from the lamp. Um, and at the moment they are a lot better, so they don't bite on every single cable that they see. But I can see that, uh, for example here, that would definitely be perfect for the kitten to, to literally just like jump on it and play with it. So take a look at cables like this as well. Another thing that you need to take into consideration is pretty much everything that you have on the display. So for example, if we take the uh, chess pieces, uh, they, they made a lot of stones, so we thought uh, we'll leave them out to start with. And actually, kittens dis displayed zero interest in them to start with, but probably a year after, so you know, a couple months ago, uh, we just had a commotion coming from the bathroom. And uh, as we went to check, uh, it turns out that uh, Blue Bull decided to take one of the pieces and play with it in a bathtub. As you can imagine, a stone piece in a bathtub creates quite a lot of noise. So we were like, what the hell is going on, Blueby? <laughs> um, it was super fun to watch, but uh, it would probably, you know, damage the bathtub. So we just replaced it with a different toy. Uh, he has this little spring that is super cool. He just goes around and just plays with it, pours it in the bathtub. Uh, one of the best things to, you know, keep your cats occupied with, <laughs> uh, just put a little spring in the bathtub and he just occupies himself. Now, I'm obviously not saying to hide everything from your cats. That would be physically impossible and probably a little bit silly. Um, what I'm saying is it's all about assessing the, uh, you know, the risk level. So, for example, the chess pieces, uh, they were too big to be swallowed by cats and kittens. Obviously, they don't know what's food or what's not food to start with. Um, so we made an you know, educated decision to uh, leave them out to start with. It's all about observation and deciding which things can be potentially harmful to your kittens. Just make sure to observe your cats for the first few days and uh, I would probably suggest 
if you are able to take a couple of days off work, uh, you know, spend the time with them and see what they get interested with. Uh, if you see something that they spend too much time with or, you know, like to poke around with the pause, then put it away and see, see if, you know, they move on to something else or if that helps. We are quite lucky because we don't have any curtains, instead we have some blinds. Uh, but if you do have them and you see your cat uh, playing a Spider-Man and walking on the curtains, uh, I would suggest diverting the attention. So probably picking up a toy and uh, getting them onto the um, cat tree uh, to, you know, uh, simulate the same motion of like climbing and stuff, uh, but saving your precious curtains. Um, when it comes to the blinds, uh, the super interesting part of the blind is this little thing hanging here. Uh, our cut tree is quite close to the uh, window, so we have to move it back a little bit so Blue Book can't reach it. Uh, Pixie is quite cool with the blinds, uh, but uh, Blue Bee displays lots of interesting dots. In our mind, this can be a little bit dangerous because, you know, uh, if Blue Book's playing on it, trying to reach for it, uh, he could potentially put his head in it somehow and, you know, get strangled. I wouldn't like to see that. So obviously, uh, just be safe and, you know, assess your surroundings in the living space, I suppose. We do get asked um, what to do so the cats don't go onto the dining table. And again, they are allowed on it. Uh, but we're quite lucky because they're not really interested on getting on the table while we're eating. They are very interested in it when we're studying though. So <laughs> that's probably the prime time for cuddles. <laughs> All the time. And uh, when we're using laptop, uh, Pixie has a heat sensor in her eyes. So whenever she sees me on the laptop, uh, she knows that uh, it's probably nice and warm, so she just sits on it. Um, if we can, we'll get a clip of Pixie on the laptop now. You like the laptop? Yeah, Poma's laptop is so good. No doubt in my mind that the clip you just saw is Pixie sitting on a laptop because it is super easy to record. She always does this. Another thing is cleaning behind the furniture, the places that you don't clean so regularly, if that makes sense. So for example, we have this little gap in between two cupboards here and uh, we actually they didn't clean it before we got the kittens, so uh, Bluebell was very quick to point it out. Uh, we just saw a little kitten running around with a spider web on him, <laughs> and then we, we realized it was from there. So try to think of the places that cats can squeeze in and, uh, you know, do the cleaning for you. Good idea is to do a little survey and make sure there's uh, no gaps big enough for your kitten to squeeze in and potentially get stuck, because that's the danger. Then we have the most important hiding spot, which is the under the bed. Doo -doo -doo. The solution that we came up with is we've put everything that has to be under the bed into the uh, two boxes that you just see. And uh, that way cats don't have anything, you know, too interesting to play with under the bed, unless they bring some toys under. <laughs> Which happens a lot. Yes, <laughs> yes. Hello, Pixie. She's going to join us. Little Meowdo. Hello, and she's going to model how to get under the bed. Are you? <laughs> <laughs> and she's in. Hey, Pixie. They love sitting on there. What you could do is lay on the floor and take a look around and see the world from the kitten's perspective. Uh, just see if anything looks interesting. So, for example, I can see that these cables are pretty attractive to me. Uh, we made a little bit of a mess earlier when I was showing you them, so we'll probably have to fix that. I think Blubber would still get very interested in those. We also made sure that all the chemicals are hidden away. So we have them in this cupboard here where we uh, have our hoover and the washing machine. Uh, what we have in here is a lint roller as well. We have multiple of those uh, around the house. So we keep one right by the door, we keep one here and we keep one in the bedroom as well. You will need some of them too. You will need plenty of them. <laughs> A very important thing is to check all of your plants. So if you have live plants or if you like to have fresh flowers in your home, definitely check if they are not poisonous to cats. We have um, a little bouquet here, but these are actually fake. Um, I just do a lot of peonies, uh, but they are unfortunately poisonous to cats. So I just resorted to having fake ones. 
It is definitely your decision if you do decide to keep your cat just indoors or let it go outside on its own. Uh, it is very nice for the cats to have a safe outside space to enjoy the fresh air um, and especially for ragdolls they shouldn't really be let outside on their own because they're not very street smart and can get lost very easily. This is why we decided to cat proof our balcony. We can show you now. And the cats will definitely follow as soon as they hear the sound of the outdoor opening. The outside, guys. <laughs> guys, we're going outside. <laughs> yes. Hey, Blueby. For cat proofing our balcony, we used a bird net. So it's like a multi layered net that is used on trees. Um, it is actually holding up very, very well. Uh, we did a video about uh, putting it up, so we'll link it down below for you if you want to watch this. We're quite lucky that we have Matt who is great with DIYs and anything like this. <laughs> so he came up with the idea of uh, running a rope through the whole thing and then using little metal hooks to attach the net. Uh, what um, is very good about our balcony is that this part is totally solid as well. So there wasn't um, anything that we needed to put top to bottom. Um, it literally just ends right below the metal part. Um, if you are not confident in doing it yourself, there is a few companies that you can use. In the UK, the most um, popular one is definitely Protect A Pet, and then they can help you um, cat-proof your balcony or your garden or make a catio for you. If you are interested in seeing how cat proofing of a garden looks like, we'll link a video below for you from Chris and Eve's channel. They have two British short hairs, so definitely check them out. They are absolutely adorable. Now, once you have all of your cat essentials, there is a question of where you put them. So the most important one is the cat tree. This is our beautiful cat tree and we decided to keep it in the living room because cats are definitely interested in seeing what we do, what we get up to. So they um, always lay on it when we watch the TV, when we eat. So it's a very good prime spot for them for watching us as well as watching the outside. They are watching some something happening on the balcony right now actually. What is it guys? What's so interesting on the balcony? Oh, Blubby looks totally uninterested. There's probably some little flies happening. And back to the cat tree. So you may notice that your cat is not using the cat tree, but take a look at where it is placed. If it's somewhere in the hallway, it might just not be interested in being there because there's nobody else around. So why would it sit there on its own? Uh, we also noticed that when we had it a little bit closer to the wall and closer to the uh, window, they weren't very interested in using this scratching post. But as soon as we moved it a little bit towards the middle of the room, they started loving it and it quickly became a prime spot. Your kitty may be a little bit overwhelmed, scared or anxious when it gets to a new home. So a good idea to have is a little cardboard box or not as little <laughs> in our case. Uh, we always keep cardboard boxes if we get deliveries um, so that the cats can play in it for a little bit. Uh, so you can have one like this with a top open or it can be a closed box with a hole in it so that your cat can hide if it needs to. It's a great thing to have and it's a good idea not to force your kitty to play or explore if it wants a little bit of time on its own. <laughs> This guy just loves boxes because he loves boxes. <laughs> because if he fits, he sits. <laughs> Another decision to make is the placement of your litter box. It is quite a big thing. As you can see, ours is certainly a big one. Uh, we have it uh, next to the door. We've had it here for like eight weeks now, uh, since the lockdown began really, because we do exercise in the living room, so it's a little bit better for us to get it out of the way. And we don't get any visitors at the moment, so it can be right by the front door. Usually we keep it um, in the living room and we have our sofa placed that way, that it is a little bit behind it, so it doesn't interfere with the look of the living room. And our cats are on the raw diet, so the poop doesn't smell. That's not a problem. 
Staying on the subject of food, you need to decide where you're going to place your food bowls and water bowls or water fountain. We have them in the kitchen on this side of the wall because there was nothing here before. Uh, we have the placemats on each side of the water fountain so that that way they can have their own eating station. <laughs> eating station, nice. <laughs> they still prefer to eat from the same one at the same time. Yeah, it's very weird. They would have two full bowls and they would just end up eating from one. <laughs> Or wait one for another. When yeah, sometimes it's a cue. <laughs> <laughs> a great thing to plan for is the placement of your scratchers. We have some cardboard scratchers like this one here placed around the house. Uh, so these are great things to divert your cat's attention from scratching on the floor, carpet, rugs or furniture. Um, so as soon as you see them do that, just take them off and put them on their cardboard scratcher on the, on the scratching post of the cat tree and that way they will associate this place with scratching. Something that a lot of people are concerned about is their sofa or a couch. Uh, we didn't have much problems with it. They started um, scratching on it um, at the beginning, but it was more so um, the way that they were stretching upwards when they were kittens, and now they're actually too big to even fit on this, so they don't do that anymore. There isn't much damage down on here. There is a few scratches over the top. Again, it's just from them uh, running across the top when they were kittens, and they were running with their claws out. Um, aside from this, um, they were very good at scratching on the scratching post straight away. So again, uh, there, there comes the diversion of the attention. So as soon as you see your cat do that, just move them to the cat tree and that should help. These are some of the most important things that we could think of and things that we think are important to know before you get your first kittens. Uh, we're going to leave the links in the description to the other videos where we discussed the, uh, some of the subjects in more detail, for example, the poisonous things and poisonous plants in your house. Uh, but other than that, if you have any more questions that we didn't answer in today's video, uh, please leave the comments below. We do our very best to answer as many of them as possible. And other than that, as always, thank you for watching. We'll see you next time. Bye.